uh, Mr. Chairman, and this is just going to further kind of explore a little bit this nuclear area, and I think it's important for all of us to vote on an informed basis. Um, the last time we had these votes were at 2.30 in the morning. Um, and so uh, in this committee, so I just think it's important for everyone to understand the consequences of their own votes. And again, just to point out that there are 21 nuclear power plants that are going to be authorized to get federal loans of upwards of $130 billion under the bill, um, which uh, you're going to be passing out here today. And, uh, you know, solar projects tend to be in the uh, millions, and nuclear power plants tend to be in the billions, just so you get a sense of the scope of what you're doing here today and what the risk is that you're exposing people to. My amendment is very simple. It says that if a project is already over budget by more than $535 million, or if the company applying for the loan guarantee experienced a net loss of more than $535 million in the last year, that project cannot receive a loan guarantee. So we have heard all the outrage associated with the $535 million loan guarantee that Solyndra received from the Energy Department. We have all heard the concern that the Department acted recklessly, even illegally. Those are the charges when it agreed to restructure the Solyndra loan in an unsuccessful effort to prevent its bankruptcy. But what some members of this committee may not have heard is that two nuclear loan guarantee projects, one of which has already been conditionally approved by the Department of Energy, could be even more damaging to the taxpayers than the Solyndra loan guarantee. Consider, for example, the $8.3 billion loan guarantee that has already been conditionally awarded to the Georgia Power Company, a subsidiary of the Southern Company, to build two new <coughs> AP-1000 nuclear reactors at the Vogel nuclear power plant. Never mind that a top nuclear regulatory commission expert said that the reactor design could be at risk of shattering like a glass cup if it was impacted by an earthquake. Never mind that this loan guarantee is more than 15 times as large as the one given to Solyndra and that renewable energy loan guarantees received an average of 7 percent of the loan guarantee funding awarded to the Georgia Power Project. Major construction on these new reactors has barely begun, and the Southern Company just announced cost overruns of almost $1 billion and a delay of seven months. Well, we are the Committee of Oversight. We have to take note of this. We are the committee with jurisdiction over nuclear power plants and we are the, we are the committee of jurisdiction over the loan guarantee program. So here is a plant that is already a billion over its budget and seven months delayed. This is nothing new, of course, for the nuclear sector. Between 2002 and 2008, cost estimates for new nuclear reactor construction rose from between $2 billion and $3 billion per reactor to $9 billion per reactor. And of the more than 40 nuclear projects that began construction after the partial core meltdown at Three Mile Island, construction cost overruns exceeded a staggering 250 percent. An average of 12 years elapsed between the start of construction and commercial operation. A second loan guarantee application for $2 billion is for the United States Enrichment Corporation. This company's shortcomings are well known. It has been rated as junk bond status. It is in danger of being delisted from the New York Stock Exchange and becoming a penny stock. There is a diminishing market for its product following the Fukushima meltdowns. Its centrifuges do not work despite the investment of billions, billions of dollars. And remarkably, its net losses were $540 million in 2011 alone. You got that number for USAC? Almost the same number that Cylinder lost in total, they lost last year, the United States Enrichment Corporation. So despite hundreds of millions of dollars worth of free technology, free uranium, free money, this company still has lost more money than the entire Solyndra loan guarantee was worth. We don't have to agree on nuclear energy policy. We don't have to agree on the extent to which the government should support renewable energy. But surely we can agree that projects or companies that, have, that are already blowing their budgets or losing money in amounts that are far in excess of the Solyndra loan guarantee should not get loan guarantees. We are the bankers. We are the loan officers. 
People are looking at us right now, post cylinder to see what are our new standards as the loan officers for America. And here you have two clear situations where it makes Solyndra look penny ante. And, and I'm very concerned about losses in this loan guarantee program. I don't want to see a repetition of Solyndra. And so my amendment here is just to say, let us step back and in a detached analytical way, just say, no more Solyndras. We can see the problems. We're going to anticipate them this time. These companies are already overrunning their budgets or have already lost vast fortunes of money, and a vote for the Markey Amendment will ensure that we do not repeat history. So I yield back the balance of my time with a request for an I vote.